Now that you have a good idea of what animation is, you're ready to create your first view animation. You'll start with animating constraint constants, an essential skill when working with auto layout. We aren't going to review how to set up auto layout constraints, but we are going to animate them. So let's have a quick review of the anatomy of a constraint. You can think of a constraint as an equation or a rule that auto layout will attempt to follow when determining a view size or position on screen. In this example, we're defining the height of the green view in relation to the height of its view controller. There are two elements in this equation that we might obviously want to animate, the multiplier and the constant. The constant of a constraint is easy enough to change, so let's start with that. We're going on a tropical vacation. But we cannot go until we pack, and we cannot pack without... A beautifully animated packing list application? Right. And here is that app. We obviously need to pack more than these three items. This little plus button should expand a menu to allow us to add items. In fact, if you open the starter project and take a look in viewcontroller.swift, you will see an IB Action toggle menu already hooked up to that button for you. Since this is a modern app, it's already using auto layout constraints to lay out all of the views. To start with, we just want to change the height of the menu, and a simple way to do that is to create an outlet for the menu's height constraint. From the storyboard, select the menu view. Navigate to the size inspector and select the constraint for the menu's height. From the connections inspector, drag from new referencing outlet to the little yellow view controller object here and select the outlet you just made. Back in viewcontroller.swift, we now have a reference to the constraint we want to animate. We're going to do all of our animating inside toggle menu. This method is only doing one thing at the moment, which is toggling the menu is open bool every time the button is tapped. Remember that, generically speaking, an animation is the change of a property's value over time. When you create an animation, you need to decide the start value and the end value. You might also think of them as the from and to values. In our case, the property we want to animate is menu height constraints constant. The start value will be whatever the constant's value is when the method is called. We only need to define the end value, which we want to change based on whether or not the menu is open. Let's do this using a friendly ternary operator. Now the menu should be 200 points tall when opened and 60 when closed. Build and run. The menu height changes as specified and we've exposed a fancy slider that we can use to add things to our list. At the end of a method like this one, if a constraint has been changed, your layout will automatically be marked as needing an update. This means that UIKit knows it has to update the layout for you, and that's why we see the menu height changing. To force layout updates to happen on demand, you can ask for the views to be laid out immediately by calling layout if needed. We know how to change the constant of a constraint, and we know how to force auto layout to display that change. How do we animate these changes? With the UIView class method, animate with duration. You'll be very familiar with this method by the end of this section. The simplest version of this method only has two parameters, the duration of the animation and the animation's closure, which will contain whatever it is you want to animate. When you're animating constraints, the thing you want to animate is the layout. There are two basic steps when using this method to animate constraints. One, set the constraints constant to the value you want to animate to outside of the animation. We've already done that. Two, call layout if needed from within the animations closure. This will force the update of any layout changes to be animated. Let's give that a try and toggle menu now. There are several versions of this animate method. We want the one that includes duration, delay, and options. Duration is the total time it will take the animation to finish. We want a third of a second. We don't want to wait for this animation to start, so use zero delay. Options is a great option set to help you customize your animations. You'll explore some of these in a challenge later in the section. Here, we will use an animation curve called Curve Ease In. Leave the animation's closure empty for now. And finally, we don't need anything to happen upon completion of this animation, so set this to nil. All that's left is to specify what it is you want to animate within the animation's closure. Use layout if needed here. 
Now you are asking for any necessary layout changes to be animated. Build and run. Now the menu's height animates smoothly between values. That's all there is to creating a basic constraint animation. But does this only work when animating constraints? Actually, calling layout if needed will update the center and bounds for every view in the layout. Any changes that are animatable will be animated. So what if we wanted to change the title when the menu is open? Add a similar conditional operation for that to see what happens. Change the title label's text to select item when open and packing list when closed. Build and run again. The text does change, but not in an animated fashion, as there's no standard animation for changing text in UIKit. If we make select item very exciting looking by adding lots of exclamation marks, then build and run again, you can see that something is animating. What's happening? The difference in intrinsic content size between packing list and the very demanding select item is causing a change in the bounds of the label. Layout if needed is forcing the bounds to update within the animation, and because bounds is an animatable property, even though the text changes instantaneously, the size of the label may not catch up to its content until the end of the specified duration. This is not the animation effect I'm looking for. We talked about the magic of layout if needed earlier. Right. You can fix this by moving the changes to title label up and adding another call to layout if needed immediately after. If we build and run one last time, we'll see the menu height animate smoothly and the label text change without animating the label itself. Ta-da! Nicely done, but we've still got some work to do before this app is pretty enough to use for packing. <laughs>